you can learn your, your, your so-called TTPs, you learn how to prosecute an ambush. But when you go on operations, the one thing you can't do is that psychological tension and fear. One, you don't know if you're going to be alive at the end of the day. And additionally, you're going to potentially make decisions that lead to the loss of the lives of your, of your friends and brothers and sisters in arms. The only way you can replicate that in my mind is to be psychologically prepared for operations. You've got to do adventure training. What we do involves loads of planning and lots of equipment. Ultimately, that's one of the most important parts of it, prepping our equipment, thinking about logistics, thinking about risk assessments, things you need to do in order for any plan to get off the ground. So we're in Rothy Marcus Lodge, which is a couple of miles outside of Avonmore, which is within easy reach of lots of places in um, the Kengorms. People in this club are military, either uh, regular reserves or ex-military, but we're also just all climbers. Hi, I'm Sophie Jennings. Um, I'm a, an officer in the Royal Navy, and I'm also a keen climber. It's a great opportunity for the club to celebrate 75 years of history this year. There's a, a strong base of mountaineering and climbing in the Royal Marines, but also within the Navy. And I've been involved in the club for all my career. My name's Rob McGowan, I'm in the Royal Marines. I've been in the Royal Marines for uh, 34 years and I'm the president of the Royal Navy Royal Marines Mountaineering Club. Three words that spring to mind for me with regard to this club, and that's evergreen, gradeless, and rankless. So I happen to be a slightly senior officer, but I'm Rob. There's a great humility. We don't compete with each other over what grade we climb today or what mountain we climb today. That doesn't matter. People come together who may have climbed with each other for many years, or they may not have climbed with each other at all in the club, which, um, which I think makes it attractive for a lot of different people. There's also, as a Royal Marine, uh, a feeling of great history in Cornwall, when the mountain leaders uh, were finding their way during the war as commandos cliff leaders they were called then, in the, in the 1940s and beyond. And from that, there's a, a strong base of mountaineering and climbing in the Royal Marines. There are sort of legends through the club, through those years. And there are names that, are, uh, that have been part of the Royal Navy Royal Marines Mountaineering Club that we all know. We stand on the, the, the shoulders of giants, really, uh, in the things they've done. Um, they've done incredible routes all over the world. As a mountaineer, as a climber, you sort of graduate through the various um, venues, I suppose. And then the natural progression is to come to Scotland and climb in the wintertime. So Scotland is, a, is, is in some respects a progression for people, but it's also a very serious uh, environment. I want to climb, get some climbs in. That is obviously the most important thing, but secondary to that, you meet people, um, you hear other people's experiences. So I would say everyone who has come this weekend has come because they want to, because they love climbing, and they love climbing with other people in the club. That's definitely the case for me. You do it because you love it. And it's just really great to meet and spend time with people with common interests. So even if you come up and you don't get any climbing in, it's still not a waste of a weekend because of the people. We'll get here Friday night, say hello to people, make a plan for the weekend, and then get up Saturday and go. So we set off early this morning. Today's climb had a short walk in. We walked in for about an hour. And then when we got to the bottom of the climb, we started to get our, our kit on our crampons, our harnesses, talk about roping up, and then we climbed. So it's a grade one climb. The mechanics of climbing are that normally there'll be two people, sometimes more, so generally it's the more experienced person who will lead and um, the less experienced person who will, who will second. 
people underestimate the, the dangers here uh, in winter time. I think they underestimate the weather, underestimate the challenges of navigation and particularly the challenges of, of understanding avalanche. And just working closely with, uh, with somebody else in pretty hostile conditions is, uh, is one of the great challenges. You don't know how the day's going to go. There are risks that you can't control. You can mitigate, but you don't have absolute control. The hardest thing for me today was the cold. When you're stood around, when you're belaying, or when you're waiting, you get cold. It is a rankless setup. I think everyone in this environment is really conscious that safety is really important, is the most important thing. So, as a result of that, rank is secondary to experience. So, you don't forget somebody's rank, but it's less important than their experience and making sure that everyone's safe. So it's really grounding in that sense. Every day is a learning day, especially on the, on the hill. And then we got to the top. That was awesome. That was so cool. <laughs> it's always a sense of relief when you get to the top because you know that you're, you're safe. Um, and you're on the way in, so you're not going to be cold anymore. Um, but no, it's good. It's just such a great sense of achievement to finish and to, to top out. And that's why we do it, to get up and, and feel smug. <laughs> really good. It's really fun. A bit scary at times, but um, I always knew I was safe because Andy had let it, so it doesn't stop it being scary, mind. It's not about being amazing. It's not a competition. This club isn't really about being good at climbing. It's not about beating other people or um, being the best climber out there. It's about getting out and climbing and those who are more experienced teaching those who are less experienced and, and getting out on the hill and, and sharing our communal love of climbing. And, and their time will come as well as they gain in experience. They can reach across and down to those people who've got less experience. For me it's really important. For doing something which means that your job isn't an ordinary job or an ordinary nine to five, these opportunities are, are so important. But not only that, I think it's really important for people's development to do things like this. To do activities where you're not in your comfort zone, maybe you're a bit scared, but you realise how much more you're capable of and you get pushed out of your comfort zone. If it were up to me, I would say everyone should do some kind of PT, climbing or whatever.